Okay, so I will st I'll st I will st if you can click got it off the screen. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't have that. Really? Uh, I'm okay. sorry, I, I don't, okay. I just, that, I don't that, have that, that was me. So again, I apologize. Let's start over. Let's bring to order the administrative adjustment cases for December 13th, 2022. And again, if you're you are here for the 2105 case 2105 Village Square that has been withdrawn. So the only two applications we are hearing tonight are 2104 and 2202. So with that, um, we'll start with administrative adjustment case AA 2102. Um, 2104. 2104, I'm sorry. Thank you, 2104. And is is there anyone here that will be testifying as part of this case? I, I'm here, Christopher Mudd, on behalf of the applicant. I think <clears throat> Mr. Doug Wanzer may also be here. And yes. um, Ms. Peach also joined, just joined us. So if anybody that's joining, if you could unmute. Um, and if I could see you, um, we really need to see the people that are testifying. So if you can turn on your video. There we go. I think that's it. Um, is Miss Peach going to no. testify? Or? Ms. Peach is with my office, so I'll, I'll be doing the speaking. Okay, thank you. Um, so if everybody could raise your right hand. Do you do you affirm that the evidence you shall give to the to myself, the zone administrator for the administrative adjustments in this action shall be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. do. Thank you. Thank you. OK, um, so what we do with these cases, we follow the order of evidence provided through a variance process with the city. So what we will have is the um, city staff will give a presentation followed by the applicant, so the appellant, and then um, we will open it up to any individuals in the public they might wanna speak. And then we, we will come back to the city for um, rebuttal and, as well, and the uh, applicant as well. So with that, uh, Ms. Gerhardt, if you can start off. Sure. An application by Doug Wanzer, Eric Wanzer, and Nancy Wanzer, the applicant and property owner, requesting approval of an administrative adjustment for 56, 56 and a half, 58 West Green Street, Westminster, Maryland. Uh, the adjustment is for number one, uh, zoning ordinance section 164-37A to allow a net lot area of 3,197 square feet. Adjustment number two, zoning ordinance Zoning Ordinance Section 164-137B to allow 36% of the net area of the lot to be covered by existing buildings. Administrative Adjustment Number 3 request is the Zoning Ordinance Section 164-38 to allow a building height of 23 feet. And the last request is for 164-37, Section C Number 3, to allow a lot width of 33 feet along West Green Street and a lot width of 95 feet along Anchor Street to allow the front yard setback of 15 feet, a rear, a rear yard setback of 13 feet, and a side yard setback of zero feet. So just some background, the property contains three of four single family, single family attached dwelling units. The subject property is zoned R7500 residential zone and is governed by the city of Westminster zoning ordinance. The property is also located within the city's uh, historic district. Pursuant to Maryland Code Annotated Land Use Article Division 1, the planning director is authorized to grant administrative adjustments. On July 14th of 2003, the Mayor and Common Council adopted a resolution regarding administrative adjustment procedures. Um, under this section, uh, I apologize, uh, an applicant should understand that the administrative adjustment is an exception to the general requirement imposed under Section 164, and it's not a matter of right. The applicant bears the burden of persuasion and proof to justify the granting of the administrative adjustment. 
The single family attached dwelling units located at 56, 56 and a half, and 58 West Green Street are currently located on a single lot. It is the intent of the property owners to subdivide this property into three individual lots with one single family attached dwelling unit located on each of the individual lots. In evaluating the requested administrative adjustment, the director may consider factors set forth in section 164, 161A3. The applicant has put forward um, a justification statement that was included with the staff report. And therefore, um, I'm going to talk about really our, our findings and hold on one moment, I'm sorry, and the co conclusions of law. Staff recommends that the director consider the following as findings of fact and conclusions of law. The requested administrative adjustments are necessary to, to subdivide the property to allow the existing single family attached units to be located on individual lots, which is how it typically is with single family attached dwelling units of, uh, developments. The existing development predates the zoning ordinance. The proposed subdivision is simply a paper change and does not change the current use um, of the property and no new construction is being proposed. Typically, as I said, single family attached unit, attached dwelling units are located on individual lots and one of the existing single family dwelling units has been subdivided off and is located already on its own individual lot. There's been no detrimental impact to the adjacent property owners from this previous subdivision. The administrative adjustment will not impact property owners since the property is already in use in this way and the adjustments do not change this use in any way, therefore there will be no negative impact. The city also encourages more options and availability of home ownership, and there's a benefit to the community when the amount of home ownership increases. Staff recommends approval of administrative adjustment per 164-158-1 of the city code. Thank you. Um, I have no quiet questions. It's fairly straightforward. Um, I think you're correct. It's, this is what you typically expect, expect for a single family attached development, either this practice of subdivision or a condominium regime type of element, which isn't typical for only three lots. So um, so uh, I guess we'll allow Mr. Mudd to yes. provide his comments. Thank you very much. And I won't belabor it because I realize <clears throat> that we're all rowing in the same direction here. And I appreciate um, everyone's hard work on this. It's been some time since we've been um, been working at this. And I should say for the record, I'm Christopher Mudd. I'm an attorney at Venable LLP, and I'm here representing uh, the property owners and the applicants, the Wanzers, and Mr. Doug Wanzers here today, uh, <clears throat> present as well. Um, I just, I do want to highlight two things um, in the, in the, the facts and conclusions of law that I think are important. One is um, that this really is just a paper change and that this is a building that's been here for a long, long time um, uh, before the advent of, of zoning ordinance in the in the city at all. Um, and so all we are trying to do is to, to facilitate the, the second part of this, which is uh, the ability to have individual home ownership. And I think that's a good thing for the city and certainly is a good thing for our client, but 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 ultimately a good thing for the citizens in the city um, to be able to have individual homeowners here on a on a piece of property that's primed for that use. Um, so we would ask you to approve it. One thing I, that I'll mention, and I just picked up on this to, uh, as I was preparing to to uh, to speak tonight, and that is that the the relief that's requested or the relief that's identified in the staff memo is really. It is the relief that's required for one of the three parcels, but our request had similar relief for all three parcels. So if you take a look, and I, I can share if you want me to, or if you have our application handy, you'll note that, um, let me try and pull it up, that there was similar, the same type of relief, but different, um, you know, different building heights, different setbacks, different lot areas, for each of the three, and that was the way that we requested it, and that would be the way that we would ask that it be approved as well. That was in our November 22nd, 2021 request that was filed. The, I'm sorry, Mr. Mudd, the, um, so what was provided in the staff report, is that the, I guess, the most egregious 
regulations are the most severe and the other ones are lesser? Um, so it's a good question. Um, and I'm going to try and pull up the two side by side here so I can compare them. Um, so we have uh, we were what was in the staff report was a lot area of 31. Uh, the first one was 3,197 square feet. And so um, one of the lots was 3,900, sorry, 3,197 square feet. Another was actually 1,933 square feet. That would be for 56 and a half West Green Street. So that's actually more egregious, I guess. And then 58 West Green Street was 2,362 square feet. Um, so I, I could go on, but it is not in all instances the most egregious. Okay. Um, the 30, 36% uh, zoning ordinance to allow 36% of the net area to be covered. That may have been the most egregious. It was 32%. No, it was 39% for one of the lots, 32% for the other, and 36 for the third. Building height of 23 feet, uh, 22 feet for one of the lots, and 22 feet for the other. So that one was the most egregious, if you will, or the, the, the largest variance. And then um, the lot width of 33 feet. Um, so, uh, no, one of them was 20 feet. Actually, the other two were 20 feet wide with a 15 foot setback for one, a 14 foot setback for the other, and rear yard setbacks of 43 feet and side yard, of course, of zero. Um, Mark, I have the application up with that information. Do you want me to? Uh, I, I think that's okay. If it was part of the, what was submitted by the applicant. I think that's fine. And I don't believe there's anybody here in opposition. I, I know it was how it was advertised, but I think if anybody were concerned about this at all, they would have, all three addresses were included in the advertisement. And uh, and if anybody were concerned, I think we'd they'd be here. At least that's my position. I do have a question for you. I'm a resident here at uh, Anchor Street. I'm, so, um, I'm, I'm sorry, Can um, I don't think I swore you in or I did not, I can't, I need to see you. I need to see you on the video so I can swear you in. Okay, I don't know how. I'm pretty not handy with any of this. Is the in the bottom left corner should be there should be a video. There you go. Okay. There we are. <laughs> so if you, and, and well, and if you don't, I so I talked about this earlier. The first step is staff will ask bring, do their presentation. The applicant will. I'll ask questions and I'll open it up uh, okay. for, for, for you to speak. So, but with that, since I have you, if we can raise your right hand, do you affirm that the evidence that you shall give to me, the administrator, zoning administrator in this action shall be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. So if it, we'll, we're getting there shortly. So once okay. I have a couple of questions for the applicant myself and then um then I'll open it up for public. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we we did receive some phone calls, some concerns um, from the public about this. I think there may have been concern that there was new development going on or something to that effect. So I just want to confirm that there is no development going on, a new development. It's not to redevelop the site. It's just to as stated, paper lines are being added. So we have individual lots versus one lot primarily for home ownership is that the case that, that's right and now mr wanza can can speak for himself as well what his intention is but when when we were contacted about trying to assist with this and i, I think his um surveyor was first attempting to do this and then realized that there may be difficulty with the the regulations in place so we pursued this effort and i think that the plan would be to just sell these individually is that right That's correct. That's the reason we're doing it. And the other question I have, um, if you're done, I'm sorry, I, I, I was assuming, okay. 
Um, yes. There's an access easement on the back of the property that offers, I'm, I'm assuming, access to the adjacent property um, to the, I think, north. Is that is that access easement is still part of this plan that will not be going away as part of this uh, proposal? Is that correct? Correct. Yes. We, we, again, no. There's really no proposed changes other than the creation of the lots and then the eventual sale. Okay. Um, and, and to be and to be to directly address something that you said. There's no, and I guess we kind of just did this, but there's no plan to redevelop or to rely on this relief for redevelopment or anything like that. Yeah, I would think the administrative adjustment, if approved, will go to specific to this property as it is today um, for that purpose. Um, unless, right. obviously, the ordinance does allow for if there is damage through fire or some other means, you could replace it. But But for new development, think I wouldn't hold any new development subject to the ordinance as it is today. Understood. Um, that's all I have. Um, so if the the public has any questions or comments, I think this is the time. And if you could introduce yourself and address, and you're still muted. So Thank my you. name Gary Schultz, I'm here with my family, Stephen and Sandra Herb. Um, we're residents of 18 Anchor Street. So uh, we're property owners here and we just had a concern with the driveway. Um, it is a shared driveway and we just wanted to make sure that um, that remained a shared driveway that, you know, the new residents, uh, when the properties are to be sold, um, that they know that. Yeah, that they, uh, we just want to make sure that there's no parking because we have two garages back there. I know there's been issues in the past where residents or tenants, I should say, park in the driveway, which impedes our access to the driveway or to the um, garages back there. So we just wanted to make sure that that would be uh, disclosed to them when they purchase the property. Doug, I don't know whether you want to say anything. I, I can tell you from the, to the extent that you all have legal rights by way of an easement for that purpose, then there's nothing about this process that would change that. Um, it sounds like some of what you're experiencing might just be based on use or the way that people are using things. But from a legal perspective, there's nothing about what we're doing that would that would prevent you all from continuing, excuse me, continuing to have those rights. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. And and I, to the extent that it gets approved, I think it is. I would ask Mr. De Depo, you could you could please mention that. That'd be perfectly fine from our perspective. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I have nothing else. Andrea, do you have any? Comments or rebuttal? I, I don't have any. Okay. And just for clarification purposes, this is the first step that allows, if approved, allows the applicant to move forward with a subdivision plat that would show the parcels and the lines, and the plat would equally show that access easement that exists today. So, um, so with that step, I'll, you know, we will ensure that the easement remains on that plan, and I believe it does today. Um, as submitted. So with that, and with the testimony provided and the staff report and the findings of fact, I am going to approve the administrative adjustments for this property um, for AA 2202 uh, to allow the property to move forward with subdivision of the three single family attached dwelling units. Uh, with that, I will provide a letter, um, a decision will be provided for you with that, but in the meantime, we can move forward with the subdivision Perfect. application. I'm That's sorry, great. Mark, just yeah. for clarification purposes, so that everything is, can you say that you approved 2104? Um, did, I, did I do it again? Case, yes, just so that, because uh, the next you, case is 20. So I apologize. I am approving administrative adjustment case AA 2104. Okay, thank you. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much.
appreciate your uh, appreciate the staff's attention to detail and and work walking us through this. So thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Take care. Okay. Do we um? There is an iPhone. I'm unsure if the iPhone is for this case or if not, but. But uh, can you make a note um, about that easement just to ensure that the, because uh, that will be part of the approval as well, to ensure that the easement is remaining? Yes. Okay. Um, will you anticipating anybody for administrative adjustment case 2202? I did um, send the information to uh, Walgreens. I was I don't I didn't know if they were planning on attending or if they had the ability to, but the information was shared with them. Okay. Well, why don't we move forward with you with your presentation? Okay. So if you hold on just one moment, I'm sorry. Let me um, share the um, the location map again, just so that everybody who watches this later. Uh, we'll be able to, <laughs> to see that. Hold on one second. Okay, are you able to, to see this? Yes, thank you. Okay, and are you able to see anything else on my screen? I just see the location map. Okay, perfect. Are you ready? Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, an application by Cornerstone Permit Company the applicant Westminster, I'm sorry, Westminster Meadow Creek LLC, which is Walgreens, the property owner requesting approval of an administrative adjustment for 500 Meadow Creek Drive um, to zoning ordinance article 16, section 164-111C to allow the reduction of two off-street parking spaces from the required 66 off-street parking spaces the applicant is requesting the administrative adjustment to allow a change in use by adding a patient service center inside of an existing Walgreens center. So on July 28th, uh, 2022, an application was submitted to the Department of Community Planning and Development for administrative adjustment for 500 Meadow Creek Drive. The subject property is zoned NC, which is neighborhood commercial, and is governed by the City of Westminster Zoning Ordinance. The mayor, um, I'm sorry. Um, and the property is owned by Westminster Meadow Creek LLC. The subject property contains a one story structure in use as a Walgreens, a drugstore or pharmacy use uh, pursuant to zoning ordinance section 164, 64 to number 33. A drugstore or pharmacy is a permitted use in this zone. Uh, the patient center is a medical use um, and a medical office and clinic use, and it's also a permitted use in the neighborhood commercial. The applicant intends to convert 397 square feet of storage space to the proposed patient service center, which, which requires six additional parking spaces. Four existing parking spaces on site, which were in excess of the required parking spaces with the initial Walgreens sub uh, development plan. Uh, and they will be used for the patient service center, leaving two additional parking spaces required. The applicant submitted a simplified site plan, which was SS2212 for the proposed patient service center. Pursuant to Maryland Code Annotated Land Use Article Division 1, uh, the planning director is authorized to grant administrative adjustments for uh, different requirements. And on, once again, as I said previously, on July 14, 2003, the mayor and common council adopted a resolution in regards to administrative adjustment procedures. Um, all of that um, is that just to remind you that it is the applicant should understand that the administrative adjustment is an exception to the general requirements imposed under uh, chapter 164 and that it is not a matter of right. An applicant bears the burden of persuasion and proof to justify the granting and granting of an administrative adjustment. Once again, the proposal is to remodel a portion of the existing Walgreens store to create a patient center. The proposed use is allowed within the zoning district, and the applicant did, did submit the required water and sewer application, a water and sewer allocation application. 
Once again, um, the director may consider several factors when thinking about this administrative adjustment, and all of that is located in the staff report. However, I'm going to speak tonight about the findings of fact and conclusion of law. The staff recommends that the director consider the following facts and conclusion of law. The proposed patient service center has a quick turnaround and does, and does not function as a typical medical center. Cross parking within the shopping center already is taking place as vid visitors patron the different shops and restaurants. The two parking spaces that were asked to be waived will not impact the current parking situation in any way since there are various places to park within the shopping center. The store itself provides a location for convenient shopping for customers. These shopping trips are quick and the parking spaces have a high turnover rate. The Walgreens site does not experience any, any issues with a shortage of parking. There are several parking spaces anticipated to be available throughout the hours of operation of Walgreens and the proposed patient service center. It is unlikely that these two spaces will even be necessary for customers to use as there is such a quick turnover in parking spaces. The requested administrative adjustment will not impact adjacent properties since the property is already um, sorry, there was there was an error of that one. Um, the addition of the proposed patient service center um, use at the property will not alter the current operation and demand for parking beyond the current operation of the property. Several other Walgreens have added the patient service center use without the need of an additional parking spaces. Therefore, there will not be any negative, there will be no negative uh, impact to the adjacent property owners. Staff does recommend the um, approval of the proposed administrative adjustment per section 164-158-1 of the city code. Thank you. Not seeing anybody here for the applicant. Um, I, I, I thought somebody would show up. Um, but with that, um, I have no questions. I think, again, this is straightforward. Um, and I think the finding and facts are accurate as to how this operates and how parking will be needed for the site. So with that, um, I will be approving administrative adjustment case AA2202, uh, subject to the staff report the um, and the findings of facts and conclusions of law. And with that, I will be canceling the meeting. It's adjourned. <laughs>